Welcome to Privacy Ninja. Today we are gonna talk about which video conferencing software is the best safe alternative to Zoom. If you have not heard of the security problems with Zoom, please do stay till the end of the video to get the full review. Check this out. The most obvious winner from the COVID-19 lockdown, Zoom video communications, but it's had a pretty tough week. Since then, those Zooms come under increased scrutiny and the stock's given back a big chunk, falling to around 123 as of today. Journalists, security researchers, even some regulators have pointed out security flaws. And they got a new Zoom has been getting hacked lately and investors are also suing Zoom. What a nightmare. It's been reported that Zoom has been lying about its encryption and concealing security problems as well. Governments across the world has issued notice to their ministries to stop using Zoom until Zoom fixes its security problems. Recently, the Ministry of Education in Singapore has also suspended Zoom. The school's home-based learning sessions suffered a breach involving obscene images. Two men joined the session without any invitation and asked female students who were present to flash themselves. The two men also shared their screen and showed pornographic images. Schools in the US has also banned Zoomed and will be using Microsoft Teams instead. Companies like Google have also started to ban employees from using the software. Even Elon Musk's SpaceX have banned Zoom over privacy concerns. These are the companies that has banned Zoom. Google, Smart Communication, SpaceX. Here we have the government and government agencies that have banned Zoom. Taiwan, NASA, German Foreign Ministry, United States Senate, Australian Defense Force. Here we have the educational institutions that have banned Zoom. New York City's Department of Education, Clark County Public School. So if you are watching this video and you are Zoom user or know someone who is, maybe you have been forced by your company or school to use Zoom. Do show them this video and let them know the security problems. If you had any security problems with Zoom or using any other type of video conferencing software, do let us know in the comments section. Ask us any question about the software that you are using and if there are any privacy problems we will let you know. Privacy Ninja is a privacy consultancy company specialized in teaching users how to secure their digital identity and footprint. We also help companies with their data privacy. We will now dig deeper into Zoom's security and privacy problems. Zoom lied about its end-to-end -end encryption. But when reached for comment about whether video meetings are actually end-to-end -end encrypted, a Zoom spokesperson wrote, Currently, it is not possible to enable E2E encryption for Zoom video meetings. Zoom video meetings use a combination of TCP and UDP. TCP connections are made using TLS and UDP connections are encrypted with AES using a key negotiated over a TLS connection. The encryption that Zoom uses to protect meetings is DLS, the same technology that web servers use to secure HTTPS websites. This means that the connection between the Zoom app running on a user's computer or phone and Zoom server is encrypted in the same way the connection between your web browser. Zoom claim that their app uses AES-256 encryption for meetings where possible. But the university researchers found that in each Zoom meeting, a single AES-128 key is used in electronic codebook ECB, mode by all participants to encrypt and decrypt audio and video. ECB mode is not recommended by security experts since patterns in the plain text are preserved when encrypted, making it easier for malicious actors that have the corresponding keys to decrypt the data. The report notes that most of Zoom's developers are based in China, and that some of its key management infrastructure is in that country, meaning keys used to encrypt your meetings could be generated there. It's also unclear how Zoom generates keys and whether they're adequately random or might be predictable. We will now go on a timeline of what went wrong with Zoom. On March 26th, 
Motherboard investigation shows Zoom's iPhone app sends data to Facebook even if you don't have a Facebook account, Zoom then removed the Facebook SDK. Class action lawsuits are also being filed against Zoom, alleging that Zoom violated California's new data protection law by not obtaining proper consent from users about the transfer of their Zoom data to Facebook, classroom Zoom bombing attacks on Zoom are also being reported. On March 30th, more bugs were also being discovered by former NSA hacker. On April 1st, more security flaws were discovered, the application was leaking users' email addresses and photos to strangers via a feature loosely designed to operate as a company directory, CEO of Zoom, Hugh Arn also made a public apology on Zoom's blog. On 2nd April, an automated tool can find Zoom meetings online that were not password protected. It could find 100 Zoom meeting IDs per hour. On 3rd April, Zoom video call records left viewable on the web. This is unacceptable from such a big company. On 4th April, another Zoom apology was issued CEO of Zoom said I really messed up as CEO, and we need to win their trust back. This kind of thing shouldn't have happened. On April 5th, calls were mistakenly routed through Chinese whitelisted servers. On April 6th, schools all over the world started to ban the use of Zoom. Zoom accounts started appearing for sale on the dark net. Taiwan government went on to ban the use of Zoom as well. On April 8th, fourth lawsuit was announced. Google joins in the ban on Zoom. Hackers were also selling zero-day exploits of Zoom for around $5,000 to $30,000. On April 9, US Senate announced that it would avoid using Zoom because of the security issues surrounding the video conferencing app. Singapore's Ministry of Education also bans school teachers from using Zoom. Then German Ministry of Foreign Affairs told its employees to stop using Zoom. The Pentagon, Department of Defense of the United States also bans free version of Zoom due to security problems. On April 13, 500,000 Zoom accounts were sold on hacker forums as well as on the dark net. On April 15, a $500,000 price tag for zero-day exploit was found floating around in the underground market such as hacker forums and the dark net. Two new massive Zoom exploits were also uncovered, a security researcher found a way to access and download a company's videos previously recorded to the cloud through an unsecured link. The researcher also discovered that previously recorded user videos may live on in the cloud for hours, even after being deleted by the user. On April 20th, former Dropbox engineers went public and said Zoom knew about its security flaws. A Holocaust memorial was also Zoom bombed with Hitler images, the FBI is also warning the public to watch out for hijackers trying to infiltrate their Zoom video sessions. The FBI has received multiple reports of conferences being disrupted by pornographic and or hate images and threatening language. Privacy Ninja would recommend you to use another safer and private video conferencing software instead. There is another. Introducing Jitsi, the best privacy-focused Zoom alternative out there in 2020. Setting up a call is really easy and no user registration is needed to use this video conferencing software. Needing no user registration means your personal data is not being collected like how Zoom does. Jitsi is open sourced, meaning that your data is not being shared with any big company like Zoom. Google, Microsoft or Facebook. We really recommend you to use this if you are really interested in keeping your personal data private. Even Edward Snowden recommends users to use this video conferencing software. Now we are going to show you how easy it is to create a call on Jitsi. Now that the room is created, remember to set a password for the room for security reasons. Here are the various functions that Zoom has, like background blurring, recording, live streaming to YouTube and more. 
Remember to subscribe to Privacy Ninja for more content, and visit our website www.privacy.com.sg.